Harris. I'm a graduating senior here at Augusta State University, graduating this May with a general BFA in Fine Arts, as well as emphasis on photography. When I started here, I was a joint enrolled student. At the age of 16, I came and met with two professors who were going to sort of do a portfolio review back in our old Fine Arts building, where it was very chaotic. You had music students running around everywhere, as well as art students. And it was Janice Whiting and Kristen Casaletto. They both took my work out, reviewed my high school work, gave me the hardest critique of my life, and put me in tears. So they walked away for a little bit, left me there standing, and I felt like it was all upperclassmen kept running around looking at my work, asking me crazy questions that I'd never thought about in my life. And then they came back and said, well, you're okay. You know, we think you could start in probably drawing three. We're gonna let Janice watch after you for a while and kind of see where you go from there. When I was a double, or a joint enrolled student, I was a double major in art and pre-med and a minor in Spanish. Coming from the background that I came from, my dad was the sales center manager at Augusta Coca-Cola for many years, retired there after about 40 some odd years, and my mother's side of the family owned a music business. So from a very early age, success was not, you know, not having success wasn't going to happen in my family. If I brought home a B, I heard all about it. So I knew I needed to do something that was going to be a great, strong career, but I wanted something fun, so that's why I had art in there too. It was about the third or fourth biology class that I had taken, and I realized during our lab practical, the pictures in the book were awful. They were the worst things I'd ever seen in my life. You study the book, you go into the lab, and they're nothing like we studied, and we all failed. And so I said, you know what, next time I talked with my lab mates, so I'm gonna bring my cameras in, because photography at this point had just been a hobby, and I was gonna take pictures of everything in the lab. And about a week later, I sold half the print to the class and to the professor who told me that maybe pre-med might not be my avenue. I was doing great and making strong A's and B's, but I was bored, and it was very obvious in her class. So my first full semester at Augusta State as just a fine art major, I had painting with Janice Whiting. I also had photography with Jennifer Onofrio and one of the art history classes with Michael Schwartz. Luckily, Janice was letting us do some self-assigned paintings, which I thought was amazing, and this was my first painting that I was able to do self-assigned. The, the composition is an abstract one, as you can see, and it actually derived from one of my photographs of paint. In Photography One, I actually got really interested in photographing chipped paint, very close-up details, and I love the composition, but I didn't feel like the photographs themselves were that strong. So I took the photograph into the painting studio, changed the composition, abstracted it further, and this is what I came up with. I also wanted to push the medium of paint even further in these paintings by painting it in a way that looks very three-dimensional, almost like a mini relief sculpture. From this, I got very stuck. I couldn't figure out, because I could keep adding layers, I could probably add a million layers on this. I didn't know when to stop. So Janice suggested, this is why we have a couch. Go sit on the couch, just look at it, take notes, take a photograph, maybe take some detailed pictures because sometimes an overall picture doesn't give you the full breadth of what you did. So this is what I did, and this is what I got. This is a close-up detail of the actual paint hanging off the canvas, and I was absolutely amazed with this. Not so much the technical quality of the photograph, because there are some weak points that I found, but I was really intrigued by this world that I'd been around and I never saw. And it was almost this idea that I was overlooking so many details of things close to me, and that's why I became very interested in this macro subject matter. And I'm using the term macro subject matter sort of loosely. We use macro lenses in photography, but however, because I'm blowing these images up from something extremely small to something very big, it's actually called micro photography. But the terms are very loosely used. Nobody really harshes down so much on the exact term, but just so we can get on the same page. So I had to stop this series and start something else. And I had to stop because of financial means. If you saw how much paint <laughs> went on these paintings, you'd realize really quick for a college student to do this was really tough. I could only beg daddy for so much money to go buy another set of oil paints to put on these canvases. So I decided, you know, this next semester I'm going to just focus on my photography skills, my technical ability in this micro photography that I've gotten into because I realized I was getting lucky and that's something I don't sit well with. Every photographer gets lucky just like every painter gets lucky. Everybody gets one good something and I wasn't going to settle with that. So this is when me and Roseanne sat down, really looked at macro photography and micro photography, and decided that every breath I was taking, I was changing my focal point because I was zooming in so close. And in photography, I wasn't able to get an actual three-dimensional texture, so I wanted to try to photograph things that have, would replicate that texture but on a two-dimensional surface. 
So I did a ton of these. Um, it's still abstract, but not non-representational, which you'll see in my current work. I did a good 50 to 100 of these where I was getting them spot on every time. Focusing was great. And then I got bored, which is something I do a lot in my classes. Once I get to a plateau, I've got to keep doing something to keep my, my focus. So since I was interested before in a dialogue between painting and photography, I decided I'm going to try to do this now in photography and analog, so digital and the darkroom. Because in photo one, I did not have a good friendship with my film camera at all. I hated it because I just bought this fancy new digital camera. I didn't understand why I couldn't use this new camera I spent so much money on. So I neglected film. In this class, I decided, you know what, I'm going to do it. But I want to take a step back. Uh, if you know me as an artist, I am sort of chaotic. I'll think back to our painting studio days. I'm sort of like what Raul called a radial bomb. You drop me down and I spiral everywhere out of control. And with this being said, when I paint, I use my arms as palettes. I usually don't use a paintbrush. I use palette knives and sticks. Sometimes I use my hands. Stuff is everywhere. I feel like I'm sort of like phthalo blue. Anything I touch is going to be covered in everything and it's not going to come off. In the photography studio, it's not quite that messy. We still have different chemicals that we can use, but it's a totally different world. So my, my radial bomb in photography is the fact that I don't always pay attention and I do too many things at once. So when I wanted to make a digital negative so that I could work from digital to analog, I put transparency paper in, I put the entire stack in upside down, printed it out, and this is what I got. These absolutely amazed me because now I was able to abstract my images even further, which is something that I'd really gotten into. Around this time in my life, my commercial photography business took off and I was really being demanded by what the commercial market told me I had to do. I had to make a bride skinny. I had to make her hair look like she got her highlights done. I had to make them look in love even though they were fighting 15 minutes before they got to me. I had to do this. But on my fine art photography, I was allowed to go and explore and do totally new things, which is why I really became clinging to this. I wanted to push away from representational objects as much as possible. Another reason why I feel like I love these is because the love of texture for me, I feel like was translated into these. Uh, at this time, I do believe I was photo three doing these images, and I had my negatives kind of pinned up on the board, and every photo one student wanted to go up and touch these little negatives. So I got their hair, I got dust, I have some that have people's fingerprints on them, and it just sort of made this accumulation of a new texture that I hadn't seen before. I feel like it added a lot of depth to these. Unfortunately, with this series as well, I came to a stopping point because we had a lot of technical issues in the darkroom. Because I wanted to print these so large, I got a nasty vignetting, a white vignette around the corners, and it didn't enhance the image, it just looked like lack of technical ability. And since I'm already pushing the boundaries on this new abstract idea, I didn't want to add any other technical offsets for people to think that it just was unskilled photography. Next comes my last required class, at ASU, which was ceramics. I hated ceramics. I thought it was the worst thing known to man. I didn't want to do it, which is why it was my last class I had to take. So Raul came up to me. He knew I was upset. He said, you know, maybe you should write a list. Let's write a list of pros and cons and see where you stand. Well, I brought it back to him on Monday. My con list was two pages, and my pro list was about two lines. I liked the texture. I thought it felt neat. And I liked how it picked up other texture from other objects, and that was honestly it. I hated wedging, I hated air bubbles, I hated glazing. There was not one thing I could find about ceramics that I liked. So after I gave this list to Raul, he said, okay, maybe this is gonna be a little harder than I thought. Go sit back in your chair and think of something. And where I sat in the ceramic studio, the entire line of wheels were next to me. And you have every amazing ceramic person throwing all these amazing vessels, making me feel about this big, because I'm not doing anything. So I, feel, I realized I need to start wasting some time in class. I know we've all done it. So I started just getting a little ball of clay and pressing it into the board that was next to me and throwing it to the side just so I could look busy. Don't ask me what I'm doing, I don't know, I'm just trying to do something. And at the end of the day, I noticed this structure and I loved it. I thought this was extremely neat. I, I didn't know why I liked it yet. I really had to look into it more, but I knew I wanted to keep doing this stuff. That next class, Raul came up and mentioned the stacking sculpture that I should look into, which is really what took this off. 
after looking at stacked, stacked sculptures, I looked at floor sculpture, minimalist sculpture, any way that I could pull another postmodern aspect into it. So I started going back to my art history. Because after we've all been Schwartz today, you, you usually don't want to go back to art history, but this is a point for me where I noticed myself going back on my own without the teacher kind of saying, go, 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 go look at this. So this was a really neat turning point for me. After I decided I wanted to do this more postmodern aspect of a floor sculpture, I had to come up with a glazing technique that would help activate the floor space so that the sculpture is now just important as a floor and the floor is as important as a sculpture. I tried glazing and I had to hand paint each one of these. <laughs> I glazed these, tried to get them a very warm color that would blend into the ground. Obviously the gallery that it was in did not have a pristine white floor, but I think it did well enough, especially with the lighting, that it definitely gave a new aspect where that floor and the sculpture were blended. Now while I was making these, I got a lot of heat from other ceramic artists in the studio. They were calling these chips and leaves and nachos and you're still doing nothing in class and Raul loves it, this is not fair. I'm making these beautiful vessels and you're doing nothing all day long. So I really became interested again in this idea of nothingness and I wanted to push it further. This is when, just like Janice per persuaded me before to take a photograph, Raul said, you know, maybe you need a break from the sculpture. I'll give you one day to bring your camera in. This is the only day. This is your only free class. Bring your camera in and see what happens. And I got this image. This is actually the first image took, taken in camera. And this is the first time I really feel like I pushed the medium of photography even further than I've ever gone. I've now got a non-representational abstract field that I love. And I have a new technique, which is focusing not on the actual three-dimensional object that you see in the camera, because most of the time when you're taught photography, you've got an object, you focus on this object. Now I'm focusing on the shadows and the highlights and where they meet. So it's focusing on space rather than just the object. So that's why a lot of these might not seem like they're perfectly in focus, but they're in the focus that I was looking for them to be in. And here's another example of this. <coughs> And these are all pictures of that clay ceramic piece that you just saw. It's just different ways of stacking.